What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today we're going to be going through some practice problems for Chem 118B. We're going through midterm number one. Midterm number one. And this is my second video. I have about 10 more practice problems here. If you haven't seen the first one, go check it out. We're kind of building off of the chapters. So we're getting close to the exam. All right, so let's get started. So first one here, I have ozone reacting with the double bond. So if you guys don't know this little trick already, anytime you see O3, you should try to find your double bond and simply just splice down the middle. So keep a little double bond on one side and keep a little double bond on the other. And if I number this, A, B, C, D, E, and F, then this slice here is just going to break it open. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. So I have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then simply see what each is attached to. So carbon number A here, I said, is going to keep a little bit of double bond. Okay. And then B has an ethyl group, C, D, E, and F. And then F also gets a little bit of double bond. And since we're working with three oxygens, then we should expect to put an oxygen on each of my double bonds and then simply fill in what's missing. So here's an H and here's an H because A had a little H coming off and F had a little H coming off. All right. So that's going to be your answer. Well, let's go ahead and just try to predict the product. So I know I have a double bond reacting with my oxymercuration, demercuration. Is this going to be Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Well, I don't see any R2O2 or any H2O2, so I'm going to assume here that I'm going to get my Markovnikov answer, okay? So this was Markovnikov. And this will be a racemic mixture because I can add that OH from one side or the other side. So that's going to be my final answer. It's going through Markovnikov. All right, so let's go to number three. Number three, I have hydroboration oxidation, and I see a little bit of H2O2, so I know my goal here is going to be adding an OH group. Now, is it going to go on the Markovnikov or the anti-Markovnikov? Yep, so since I have that R2O2, I'm going to put my OH group on the anti-Markovnikov. So this one was anti-Markovnikov, okay? Let's go on to number four. Number four, so we have OSO4. This is a good one. Anytime you see OSO4 with this little combo here, you should be thinking add OHs sin. So you just simply get rid of your double bond and wherever you got rid of your double bond, just fill in the missing bond with an OH group. In this case, I got an OH here and I could put an OH here. Notice how I did it on the same side. So this was sin addition. Okay, I could have done it the other way. Either way, they're going to give you the same answer. So let's move on to number five. Number five here, we have our Na with a single radical in NH3 liquid. So if we go through a little mechanism, we know we're going to be breaking off this one of these pi bonds. It's going through these fish hook arrows. So we have something like this, and this Na is going to donate that single electron. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, and six carbons. And then off of number one, two, three, four, and five, we have our double bond. And we'll call this number four, and we'll call this number five. Off of number four, I see that I have a single radical. So one, two, three, four. And off of number five, it looks like I'm going to have two electrons. So that's going to give carbon number five a negative charge. And if I react that negative charge with NH2 with an H here, then I can actually add on this H like this move on over so we get off of number five we're gonna get a nice new H and then we have a single radical still on number four and then we make some NH2 minus 
can react this one more time with Na radical. We'll go ahead and give. Oop, we'll go ahead and give that Na its single electron over to this carbon. So then that's going to give us two electrons in carbon number four. An H group over here. We still have our double bond. And then finally, once more, react with NH3 and have this negatively charged carbon grab the hydrogen. And then my final answer is essentially making my double bond trans. So here those H's were added trans. So this gives you the trans product, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to the next problem, number six here. Again, we have O3, little trick, slice it down the middle, and then you just go ahead and fill in what was missing. So keep those double bonds, add in the O's, keep the double bond, add in the O, just like that. So as long as you keep track of your carbons, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we'd get both of these guys in our final answer. All right, and notice how this one stayed as the ketone, whereas up here we end up getting formaldehyde because we had H's on both sides. All right, let's move on to number seven here. Number seven, we have HCl and ROR. So anytime you see HBr and ROR, you should be thinking anti-Markovnikov. But we know HBr is the only one can, that can either go through Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. So since I see HCl, really we can kind of neglect this ROOR and assume we're going to put our chloride on the more substituted carbon. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. Off of number four, I'm going to keep my double bond. And off of number four, I'm going to put a Cl group. Right, and we only have one equivalent, so we'll go ahead and stop there. But if I had another equivalent, we could imagine it's probably still going to go on the more substituted carbon. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Um, on the left, I see I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. And then I jump to six, seven, looks like there's eight carbons. And off of number seven, I have an OH group. So let's just give it a try. Pretty much could react this with any kind of base possible. I'm gonna do NaOET, but essentially I want to kick out that leaving group and five carbons with the double bond right here. Now that I got that double bond, my goal is essentially to try to I need to make a triple bond, right? So in order to do that, what I can do is I can add Br2 in CCl4 a Br coming off of these guys. And then if I react this with three equivalents of Na, NH2, I know that this negative group can essentially kick out. I see two leaving groups. I have three equivalents. So that means that third one is going to grab a hydrogen off of the end and it's going to make a triple bond and it's going to make it negative. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. Then I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five carbons like this. So we have one, and then two, three, and then let's see, we have triple bond, just like this. This is number four, and number five, and this carbon here was deprotonated, which gave it two lone pairs and made it negative. We're kind of right here right now. Now, how am I going to add two new carbons with an O? Well, since we have our epoxide reactions, if I react this guy, which is a really strong base, and I have an epoxide, right? I can essentially do this. So react my group with an epoxide. So if I react with an epoxide and do H3O+, plus, it's essentially going to give us our final answer, right? Because we have a really strong base, 
And this guy's gonna go attack the less substituted side because we're essentially doing an SN2 reaction here. So I wanna go on the less crowded side. And then boom, you get that connection of six. And then off of seven, you have the O group, which will become an OH. And then off of seven, you still have that methyl group, which is right here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time.